in this part we'll talk about the gram staining and how by using this gram stain we are able to distinguish between gram positive and gram negative bacteria so first we'll try to understand what is the difference between the two and then we will take up the staining procedure now if we talk about uh, let me just first write down about the gram staining this staining procedure was developed by Hans Christian Gram and that is why it is called Gram staining. Now if a bacteria gets stained by this particular procedure then we call that bacterium as Gram positive. We write it as Gram positive and Gram negative bacteria. Now what exactly is the difference and that difference is responsible for this changed behavior for the staining procedure. If this is a bacterium that we are talking of, say this is the membrane, plasma membrane of the bacterium. Now in gram positive, outside this, there is a cell wall. So this wall which we have drawn is the cell wall. And this cell wall is made up of peptidoglycan, which is rich in tichoic acid. This is very important. And this peptidoglycan is arranged in multiple layers, so you can find that this is comparatively thicker. Gram negative also have this peptidoglycan cell wall and if you look at this diagram carefully, you would find that the thickness is less. So this is also cell wall and this cell wall is also made up of peptidoglycan but it is without this tichoic acid. Without tichoic acid. This is very important. So the cell wall which is made up of peptidoglycan is thicker in case of gram positive and it is thinner in case of gram negative bacteria. Now in gram negative bacteria outside this cell wall there is one more layer and this layer is made up of lipoprotein, phospholipids, polysaccharides. So this is a lipoprotein polysaccharide layer which also has phospholipid. Now the difference is in the thickness of the cell wall and the composition of cell wall which majorly made up of peptidoglycan but there is a substance which is present in gram positive which is absent in gram negative and in gram negative bacteria outside the cell wall there is one more layer which is lipoproteinaceous in nature it also has polysaccharide, it also has phospholipids. So this is the basic difference. Now let us come to the staining procedure. What exactly happens and why these bacteria take the stain and these ones do not. The first step is we have to fix the bacteria on a slide and this is done by heating those bacteria. So we will heat fix bacteria on a slide. Heat fix bacteria on a slide. Step number two is then we add crystal violet and this is placed for about 30 seconds to a minute. That means crystal violet would be poured on this slide. It would be allowed to stay in that stain for about 30 seconds to a minute. After that, we rinse or wash that slide, wash it with simple water. After that, fourth step is put iodine and this iodine is known as gram iodine. So we add gram iodine on the slide and again it is going to stay there for about 30 seconds to a minute. And after a minute or 30 seconds, we tilt the slide, remove all that iodine and now we are going to wash it. Let us first talk about what happens before washing. 
Now here what we will find is that all bacteria they are purple. That means all of them they got that purple stain. Now the next step we are going to wash it with wash it with acetone or alcohol which is about 90%. So normally 90% acetone or alcohol is taken. Now after this in the next step what we are going to see is we would find two types of bacteria. Some bacteria which remain purple and some bacteria who lose that purple color which was seen. That means acetone or alcohol is able to wash off that stain. So the ones which retain this purple stain they become our gram positive bacteria. So these are gram positive bacteria. The ones which have lost the stain they are now treated with sephronin. And now we would find that these bacteria they appear red. So they can get stained by sephronin but not by crystal violet and iodine which is according to the gram staining. So these bacteria they become our gram negative. So this is our gram negative and these bacteria are gram positive. So now to conclude why exactly this type of staining behavior was seen in gram positive and negative. The stain that is crystal violet and iodine this stain is taken by the peptidoglycan cell wall. Now in case of gram positive it is the peptidoglycan cell wall which is exposed. So when it goes through this procedure the wall takes that color and retains that color. But in case of gram negative the stain never reached up to the peptidoglycan cell wall and the reason was presence of this extra layer that is lipoproteinaceous layer outside the cell wall. So when we place iodine on it, it all looked purple. But as soon as you washed it, the wash of it, acetone or alcohol removed that stain. So now the color is again transparent. The bacteria are again crystalline. And now when we stain them with sephronin, they become red because now the sephronin is taken by the lipoproteinaceous layer. So, the difference is actually in the wall composition. What is the wall made up of? If it is only peptide of lichen, then it's going to take gram staining. But if something else is present outside this, then this outer layer does not let the stain get in contact with the peptide of lichen. So when you wash it with acetone, that outer superficial stain gets washed off. But gram negative can be stained by sephronin. That means this lipoproteinaceous layer, it will get stained by this particular color or dye. So this is how we differentiate between gram positive and gram negative bacteria. Gram negative bacteria are more harmful to us because there are multiple layers. So the chemicals or the drugs which we use to treat them, they need to cross these two barriers. And that is why to kill them we need stronger chemicals or in other words we can say that most of the disease causing bacteria are gram negative. For example Vibrio colony. So these bacteria are gram negative bacteria. So when we use the word gram we are actually talking about this staining procedure and this is how we differentiate between gram positive and gram negative bacteria.